I'm going to introduce Martin first. He is the founder, editor, and head skills trainer and marketing lead for the Basketball Society, and he's also, which is an independent multimedia basketball brand. So Martin has a really extensive um, professional basketball resume, but as the founder of Basketball Society, he's been responsible for the development of the brand and personnel, oversees daily written content as an editor, takes lead on exclusive content, and is the head videographer and skills development trainer. Uh, his work experiences in digital marketing, radio, and, and journalism. So Martin, thank you for, for joining us today for Soul Talk. Soul Talk, how's it going? It's my pleasure, man. Thank you for having me. I'm really, really glad to be here and I'm doing well, doing well, staying inside, staying at home, but, uh, but all is well, I can't complain. Awesome, awesome. Well, hey, we'll, we'll just start with, you know, I, I, I really wanna get into how mindfulness and meditation has, has helped your life and helped your athleticism and what you've seen as far as what's developing in the field with meditation and mindfulness. But first, I just, I just wanna ask you a little bit about yourself. Like, how did you, how did you get into meditation and you know, how did you find the center or even enter this whole path? Um, so it, it started with Phil Jackson, um, who's, who's known in the kind of meditation community, obviously in the basketball community. Um, he was, uh, he would, he would practice and teach Zen Buddhism to obviously he coached the, the Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan, coach Kobe and the Lakers. And, um, I was a huge Jordan fan and Kobe fan coming up. And as a kid, I would, I would hear all the like weird little things that Phil would say. And just, you know, people just thought he was super weird, the kind of things he would say, but I thought it was, I was like tapping into it. I didn't fully understand it right away, but, um, that's wow. what got me kind of hearing about these forces of positivity and mindfulness and meditation, um, inserted into basketball culture. Um, so that put me onto it. And then it wasn't, it wasn't until like, I mean, college, in college, I started to learn, um, well, and I'll put it this way in basketball, there's a term where the game slows down. Um, and that is something that I experienced as a player. It's just certain, it's, it's when you start to master the pace of the game and the pace of your own game, the moves that you make. And that's why the Michael Jordans and the Kobe Bryant's of the world were known to meditate. They were able to master movement and, and timing and not just from a skill perspective, but from an attitudinal perspective. And so when you look at them, they were, they were heavy into meditation. And um, the, the way you slow down time in basketball kind of resembles the idea of being still, understanding your surroundings um, and just, be, just being at peace. And, and because basketball is a very, frantic game there's a lot going on you're playing both ends there's whistles there's people screaming there's all types of stuff happening at once um and so it's a game where you really have to be able to, if you want to become a master um right there's a certain there's a certain um there's a certain force you have to be able to tap into to even know how to score 30 points consistently in a game like that's not that's not just talent that's that's mental and attitudinal so um, in college, I started to, as I developed as a player, the better I got, the, the more I had to kind of meditate after games, before games, even during games. Like when you shoot a free throw, you're basically meditating. I mean, every player goes through that when they go to the free throw line. They're the only person shooting. Everyone's looking at them, right? So that's kind of an, a, 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 an inherent meditation lesson within basketball already that kids, you know, may not even realize already. But um, there's a lot of connections. So ultimately I just, it, it just seemed like the right thing to, uh, it, it just seemed, you know, it, it was around and it was relevant and it, and it helped me out. So that's how I got into it. Wow. Wow. Okay. Um, I, I want you to describe the, the flow state cause that, that is awesome. So I want to, I want to hear what your actual internal experience of that was but but give me give me one moment was there was there muffling in the background could you hear background noise uh no no not on my end not, not on your end you didn't hear anything no i didn't okay well give me one second just in case okay okay no problem
So the mysterious flow state. What what is that actually what is that actually like? And how does a person I mean, is that state in of itself something that you control or master? Or is it just really because there's been so much science on this specific thing when it comes when it comes to sports and you know, what is it like from the inside actually experiencing that? Yeah, uh, like I said, it's really like the game slowing down. Um, what it's like, it's it, it it's it's a heightened sense of awareness. Um, it's seeing things before they happen. You'll hear a lot of basketball players say that who 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 have that kind of just feel and understanding for the game where a player like me in college, I, I got a lot of steals. I got some kind of steals record at the college I played at. But the reason why is because when I'm what we call two passes away, which means the person I'm guarding, say I'm guarding you, Ryan, right now, the ball's on the other side of the, of the floor. So good defense, I should be between you and the ball where the ball is over here. So because you're two passes away, most likely it's not going to be one big pass over here. I can steal that easily, right? So you're two passes away. Eventually the ball is going to rotate over. The, most teams are going to pass the ball around. So me as a defender and someone who is looking for the steal, all I'm doing is sitting and waiting and but you have to be, you just, you have to find, and you talk about the flow state, that's kind of part of that zone. Like in basketball, they, it's, you know, we call it the zone or, you know, they call it that in other sports too. But um, I, I compare the flow state to like what we call the zone. And why I compare it to waiting for a steal is because you have to be, be so disciplined in waiting for the time. If you're, if you're a fraction off, you either overplay it or you miss it. You just miss the steal. But if you can time when that ball is when that ball is coming around and you can creep up and obviously you can't give it away like you want to steal the ball. You have to you know, you got to bait them a little bit. You got to creep in, creep in, wait and then explode. So for me, that was that's an experience of like. Being in that state when things kind of slow down and I can see what's getting ready, I can see what's getting ready to happen. So then it comes down to. Where am I going to meet it? How can I how can I capitalize on it in that moment? Wow. And and so how how is this for you specifically related to meditation and and what you've experienced in, in terms of that? Well, I you know, I'm a basketball trainer. I I, I work with kids. Um and the, you know, I'm listen. I'm a big Star Wars fan. I don't know about you. I'm a I'm a huge Star Wars. <laughs> awesome I'm a Star Wars. So I mean, I I call myself a Jedi. I consider myself a, a real life basketball Jedi out here in these streets. So um, I believe there's a force to be tapped into for a lot of these kids who just think basketball is something that's on Instagram and and on YouTube, and it's just just glitz and glamour and entertainment like. There's a true spirit to basketball. I, I believe that because I've felt it. I've seen it. It may be the same for other sports. I can't speak that. I'm, I'm basketball society. I'm not hockey society, baseball society. I can't speak for other sports. But for me, wow. I've seen a deeply spiritual element to the game of basketball, what it, do, what it does. for and, and I'm just, that's just talking about the game itself within the parameters of the court, the angles, that's not even talking about the flow of the game, the way it impacts people. That that's a that's a whole another conversation. Um, but I've I've felt like I mentioned with the free throws, even making a layup. Like young kids, a lot of times you'll see missing layups, right? You, if you go to a, a game with young enough kids, you're going to see a lot of missed layups. And even as they get older, it can become a bad habit. But missing a layup can be is all a mental thing. It's the easiest shot in basketball, right? But you'll see kids miss layups, wide open layups sometimes more often than not that's the mental thing because how many thought how many thoughts do you think can run through a kid's mind but between the time they dribble the ball two times and they go up and take that layup probably hundreds of thoughts are running through who's watching me oh my god i hope i don't miss this oh my god i hope i don't right that's a lot of decision making um and and honestly ryan not just in basketball that's in life it's what i love about oh, for sure sports in general and and for me like i said i'm able to apply basketball to life but um, that, that's why it's connected with me so deeply. And it's why I want to, you know, really kind of lead, honestly, bro, a crusade for 
not, you know, not just, you know, people in general, but I'll be, like I said, I, I, I try to do what I can for my basketball community and my village. And I want to continue to uh, provide resources for young players, for older players, for coaches to learn how to tap into other resources for their mind, to develop that mindfulness and that steadiness and, um, you know, that force, so to speak, that they can access and become greater versions of themselves because it's happened for me. I, I listen, I'm not a master meditator. I have no training. That's why when I linked up with Rose in Chicago, I was looking for people in the field already. I, I'm a basketball person. I, I don't, yeah. I, you know, but, but I have, I have experienced the benefits of meditating. So I just, I want to share that with others. Awesome. Awesome. Um, knowing that you, have so much experience in this field and you've started the basketball society what what exactly is that and what was your what was your I mean everyone has a reason for starting a project or a reason for getting into a specific field or business but like what was what was your real driving voice or your driving message that made you want to specifically start the basketball society like there's so many different routes you could have taken in your life maybe you could have just gone pro or like were, were you were you pro I played I played in a in a it wasn't pro it was like a semi amateur overseas league in Barbados one summer and that was supposed to elevate me to possibly going pro I had to do more work with agents wow. and stuff like that to if I wanted to pursue it I had to pursue it it wasn't like you know something handed to me Okay. Um, awesome. So, so you could, you could have gone that route in your life or, uh, or another route, but mm -hmm. what was it about what really made you want to start the basketball society? I wanted a platform of my own where I could do anything I wanted with basketball. And, and that's so it. cool. <laughs> and, 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 you know, make money off of it. I, you know, at some point, sure. Yeah. You know, like that's part of, everything everyone's got to make a living you know but but that wasn't I didn't I didn't start it to say I want to build the biggest basketball business empire in the world no I just knew that I had a calling and a purpose and that basketball was going to be my vessel as I am a vessel and um I wanted to create a platform one day Ryan I was in it was, this was late in college I was watching Stephen A. Smith on TV yell at me about about something some basketball conversation and and that was the light bulb for me. I'm here. I'm like, I'm listening to Stephen A. Scream at me about basketball every day on TV. He's getting paid to, to, to yell at me about basketball. I'm like, I know basketball. I can scream at somebody and, and get a check for it. So, so um, he didn't directly inspire me, but that was kind of the, the thing that got me going. And, and that basketball society didn't start from that. I started a blog. I started a few different kinds of blogs. One of them was a basketball blog. I don't even remember what it was called at that point. Several years later, that basketball blog turned into Basketball Society, along with the help of just others, friends and, and cohorts and people that, that have been with me on the journey along the way. Um, and, but yeah, ultimately, it was just about creating a platform that I knew I could use in the name of basketball to be of service to society. That, that became the ultimate goal. Wow. Uh, that is that is incredible. And I'm, I'm really glad that, that, that this was the particular thing that you've chosen because now you're talking with me and, and Rose and you're actually like contributing and giving, really putting this, putting mindfulness and, and sports together. And that's, that's an incredible thing that you're doing. And I, yeah, I really commend you for that. Um, where do you think, where do you think mindfulness and meditation is going with basketball as a sport? Like, do you actually see most teams practicing this now, or is it still, you know, only if only a few teams are doing this? Cause I, I'm not familiar with basketball and, and meditation. So I just want to ask mm -hmm. you where, where is meditation in the basketball? Honestly, it's, a, it's, a, it's a trend. Like it's a growing trend literally right now, as we speak, um, you have people like Kevin Love who plays for the Cleveland Cavaliers. He's been on the front lines of, the mental health conversation, but a part of that has been um, his his practice of, of meditation. Um, like I said, if you if you know the the two the two greatest basketball players of all time, in my opinion, Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant, if you know anything about those two individuals, you know that they they tapped into what Phil, Phil through Phil Jackson's influence, they tapped into the realm of meditation. Um, and and so you know, in my estimate, if you you look at the what the greatest were doing, you know, they were doing that you. 
not to say Jesus would do exactly what they were doing, but they some something there was working, um, and they were able to tap right. into things that others weren't. So, um, but but right now, literally Kyrie Irving, uh, 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 plenty Jalen Brown for the Celtics. I mean, plenty of players are coming out to being open about, and again, it's kind of an extension of the mental health conversation right now. So that's what's kind of helped it help bring it to the forefront more. But it's a it's a growing trend. Honestly, it's a growing trend. And I'm hoping that it in the NBA at the very top where it's happening, I'm hoping that that can help the little people like me who are just trying to help the kids in the neighborhood just tap into themselves and, and their surroundings and, and find different outlets to um, to really tap into that focus. Um, I'm hoping that that can be an example for, you know, for the rest of us in the basketball community to just be of service to each other by offering resources like, you know, meditation and mindfulness. Because again, I've just seen, I've seen the benefits of it for myself. So I think it's, I think it's important and more people in the basketball community. Again, I don't know much about how it's being picked up with other sports. I'm sure athletes in other sports are meditating. Um, but I know for a fact in the basketball community, it's, it's, it's a growing trend right now. Absolutely. Awesome. Is there, but you say there's any stigma against it or it's pretty much openly, openly accepted because big names have, have used it. The only stigma, the only stigma against meditation is like the weirdos who think that the people who are weird meditate. That's Got the only stigma I can see. Like, I think, like, especially if I, like, I, especially, again, I'm always thinking about the kids, but like, I try to always keep them in mind, but it's like, it's getting them to a point where they can be comfortable telling their friend who's only worried about who, what time you're getting on for Call of Duty or Fortnite, telling him, like, yo, I'm hitting this Medi session, like, at six o'clock. Like, that's not the cool thing to do. And we know kids are all about what's cool especially these young hoopers, like they just, they, 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 they just all about the cool, you know? Yeah. And uh, my, my thing is I tell them, listen, find ways to forget the cool. Like you can be cool as you want, but if you, you don't have everything on the back end taken care of, then you know, you're not going to be so cool later. So um, uh, yeah, I, I try to keep them in mind because I, I, the stigma for them, I think it can be difficult to sell that to their peers, you know, to make that like a, the cool the cool thing to do or whatever but who who cares what the cool thing to do is like since when is the since when is that the standard the cool thing to do like but you know so i i think it's i think it's an easy stigma to break because again look look around look at the people who are meditating who are taking care of their their minds and their bodies and their surroundings and whatnot don't you you see the difference with them like don't you want that you should want that so there should be a stigma against not 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 just not meditating, but just not being, being aware, being tapped in. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, is there anything that you or the basketball society does directly with kids? We, so we offer skills training. I'm a skills trainer. Um, I was actually outside today working with some of, some of my village, some of my village kids. Um, and uh, yeah, we do community events um, you know, for, for, I mean, for everybody, but stuff that the youth can enjoy all-star games and, um, you know, torn, local tournaments, things like that. Um, so we, you know, we, we, like I said, we try to keep the kids in mind and pretty much, you know, everything that we do, we offer camps, our, our camp, our spread love camp that we do. Um, oh, awesome. part of, part of it is meditation, um, which, which probably sounds, I mean, it's consistent with the, with the name. The theme is to empower young players to sharpen their minds, bodies, and spirits. So, um, you know, it's all, everything we do from the skills training to the film sessions to the meditation and yoga, everything is built towards giving them a wholesome, healthy uh, basketball experience where they get they're getting their game right. Like, let, like, let's not it's not sweet just because we met to meditate and it spread love and all that. It ain't it ain't sweet. Like we, we, uh, work, we get work in trust, trust and believe, Ryan, we get that work in. Um, That's great. But we also want to be able to decompress and show you how to, you know, wind it down and, and, you know, just, just enjoy like where you are in this moment right now and give them other resources besides just basketball to, um, to tap into. So yeah, our spread love camp, that's how I met Rose in Chicago. We, we did it in Chicago in February during NBA all-star weekend and, and Rose and, you know, they, they were, they were a great help. They were awesome. Um, so yeah, we, 
we, we, we try to do as much as we can for the kids, for sure. It's, it's about them. That, yeah, wow. That, I, I want to ask more about that, but there's actually a question. There's a question from, from Facebook Live, so let me access it. Um, probably some knucklehead trying to, trying to mess with me. <laughs> what are your friends? Probably. Probably. No, <laughs> I'm just messing, but they could be. Let me see. Oh, I see some I see some people on here that I recognize. That's cool. Rose, can you send it through again? Yes, um, I wrote a question uh, on on this Zoom. On this? Okay. Got it. Can you hear me, Martin? Yeah. Okay. Should, oh, okay. Should meditation be a part of a school curriculum? What are your thoughts on that? Um, I don't know the, the ins and outs and the logistics and how that works, but I would say, I would say absolutely. I would say absolutely. And um, I'm not gonna take credit for uh, starting a trend or anything like that. I'm sure there are other basketball camps that do meditation, but I don't see them. Um, but I think we'll see more of them. Um, so in schools, in basketball camps, in soccer camps, in in anything where the kids are on TikTok, like we got to get we got to get meditation out there. Um, and I like I know I must sound like a meditation fiend right now, like a straight spokesperson, but. I don't know. Honestly, like we we're under attack right now. We're under attack by by disbelief, doubt, frustration, uh, uh, you name it. Uh, there's all this sensory information coming in every day, social media, everything like that. And I'm not anti social media or anything like that. But unless you have that balance, everything that's happening right now, not to mention what's happening right now, you 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 will not be able to deal with it correctly. Um, and and I, I just feel it's it's important to tap into things like these to have an outlet for it. Um, and I, listen, I grew up in the church. I pray. Uh, I, I talk to I talk to my guy all the time. Right. We we have a constant line of communication. So I believe in prayer, uh, which is right. I guess again I'm not tech, I don't know the the proper terms or anything, but I guess they are similar in in prayer and meditation. You know, they're basically kind of the same thing. But but um, but but there are levels to meditation and and things and practices and terms and and concepts that can um that can offer you more ways to you know not to say one's better than the other but meditation is a huge resource so yeah i would say put it put it put it in any system where the, where the kids are at i'm all for that yeah i actually teach at a school where where meditation is a it's a private school um in in hollywood so they're able to do what they want with their with their curriculum and they've added they've made meditation a part of their core curriculum so it's actually a course that you have to take as a kid at that school That's so awesome. it is awesome so the awesome thing is you know i taught it um i teach it once a week and i get two classes a week and i'm a sub sometimes for other classes and pretty much of course, there's the kids that don't like it and the kids that don't care. But then there's the kids who will tell you, who, who will come to you after class and say, you know, thank you so much for that. This, this is my favorite class. Like this is, wow. this is the one place that I can just put a pause on everything. And like yeah. all my, and everything that's going on at home, everything that's going on at school, like it just, it's just, it's just not here in this room. And that's yeah. so valuable to yeah. to these kids because they have so much going on with social media and you know just pressures that that i mean i feel like when, when i was growing up i had a lot of time outside like i did a lot out there yeah. just was not on my phone at all in my yeah. early youth and i'm sure i'm sure with you it was it was the same like we were we were outside at the park on the street at the basketball court at the skate park whatever it was and i feel like um, unfortunately a lot of people are getting less a lot of kids are getting less of that because of technology. And I know it's having an effect on how they actually feel about you themselves know. and how they feel about each other. Like no you're never knows. unplugged anymore, ever. You, you can see what fat, you can see what fat Joe's up to, 
one minute and then go and, and, and go and see what this person's up to the next. Like you can, I mean, you can see everyone's lifestyle, French Montana, Diddy, like, you know, nothing against those people, but it's just like, you have a direct feed to like what they're wearing, what they're doing, what these people are, you know, and, and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it's a highly sensitivized culture right now. Um, and, and the, like, I can't imagine what the kids are going through. We, we, we came up into the social media era and technology and all that. And we've kind of, you know, claimed it as our own, but these, these little TikTokers and all these young, these young guns coming up, they're, 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 really awesome. to them. they're taking it to another level. They're taking it to another level as they should. It's really, it's really theirs. Like social media is our generation's brainchild, but it's their, it's, 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 it's theirs. We created it for them. It's a monster that we created for them. And, um, no, there's just a lot. There's there's a lot that they can see all the time, and you, like you said, you know it's affecting all of that. How they feel, what they're thinking, the standards for themselves. Yeah, it's crazy. It, exactly. Um, what oh, can you explain a little more about? I heard you use the word the village. Um, mm -hmm. What is that? And you know, can you touch on any upcoming events that you have for the village? Oh, the village man the village the village is is uh the village is is everything man the village is <laughs> it, uh, it is it is and um you know you know what i mean i mean it's everyone has their village right it takes a village to raise one um right but uh now the village is a it's it's a concept it's it's a family um that was created between myself and uh, another um another basketball lifestyle brand in my area in New Jersey, um, run by some of my, my, my good friends. Um, I've only met them in the last couple of years, but, um, they're actually who I do the spread love camp with. So, um, we got together and started doing stuff like that. And sometime around last year, we came up with this term, the village, because they coach kids and I coach kids and they do events and I do events. And so whenever we came together, it was like a joining of everybody's everything and so we started to call it our village the village um and, and we just turned it into a platform it's going to turn into a lot more um but what we're starting to do this week on wednesdays is uh bring the soul talk um uh to the village um hosted by you guys meditation center um of chicago and and the village is um is going to be the co-sponsor of it with myself and some other um gentlemen in my village, as well as some of the kids that, that we train in our village. Um, the village is going to be, like I said, it's, it's, it's going to be a lot of things. Um, it's going to be a, a, a project for us. Um, it's also a platform that we're using to tell stories for some of the kids that we coach and that we have relationships with, um, and kind of, kind of documenting some of their experiences and their journeys along their basketball paths. Um, some of them are related to us personally. I had, I had them at my crib today, we were working out. Um, so it's really just a sense of community, a sense of family. There's a media component to it. Um, there's going to be more components to it, but it's uh, overall, it's meant to be a resource and a family. Um, and so we wanted to put these soul talks that we're doing every Wednesday at 2.30 uh, Eastern time uh, via Zoom um, online. We, we wanted to we wanted to provide that as something that the village is is uh, is going to host and be a part of and and provide to people, our 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 young people, our players, our friends. You know, we we want to direct it to our young hoopers for sure, but uh, it, it's not exclusive to them. Obviously, um, we we would obviously welcome anybody, but we are looking to get some of our young players and and, and even coaches, um, anyone in the basketball community, basketball moms. Lord knows they need it. They just need prayer and meditation and all that all the time. So, um, you know, awesome, we, we want to create that outlet for them. So that's something we're going to start doing on, on Wednesdays. Fantastic. How do you, for the people who are listening, how do you sign up for this? Uh, there'll be a link. So um, you can go to basketballsocietyonline.com and uh, there will be a link there up tonight, um, probably right after this, uh, this finishes, there will be a link up there for you to uh, to sign up for the session. Great, great. So, I want to. I'm curious about the camp because this is this is actually a, an a, an idea that um, that has been swirling around in my head and the and the head of my of my friends recently. 
um, what is that, what is that camp like? And what is meditation's role in it? Is it like there's, there's some meditation, but it's mostly a basketball camp. So basically we set it up as like stations. We usually, um, it, it depends on, um, it depends on the size of like, like how many, if we have a lot of kids, it, you know, we have to fit it accordingly, but usually it's just stations. We have a classroom uh, or a room that we can use in the gym um, or a section of, you know, wherever we can set up a, a solid space to fit kids in there. Um, but the, the first time we had the camp was at a school. So we had a classroom and it's basically stations. We have one group in the gym um, doing shooting with one of our shooting coaches. We have another group in another section of the gym or in the cafeteria or in the hallway just doing straight ball handling you don't need no you don't need baskets for ball handling so wherever we got some room to dribble we we have a group doing ball handling a group is in the classroom doing meditation and yoga and another group is in the classroom doing uh film sessions we bring up video clips and we go through film sessions and have dialogue with the kids and and kind of break down the game so it's it kind of works as stations you do uh, you know, 45 minutes in the gym, 25 minutes ball handling, 15, it, it's kind of split up like that. So you kind of, you, you get everything throughout the day. Well, okay. So this is a one, this is a one day camp and it's, and it's usually at so far, it's been a one day camp. We have, we've, we have concepts to, uh, I mean, we have people contacting us that want to run the camp for their AAU program or for their, um, just at their, for their team or whatever the case, but so we're, we're flexible with it, but the one time we've actually done the full camp, it was, uh, it was, it was a one day deal. We gave lunch, it was like, a, like nine to three, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Gave them lunch, you know, only healthy foods, fruits and fruits and vegetables, you know, nothing heavy. Um, Great. Uh, yeah, yeah, just, you know, just trying to keep that consistency with the theme and making sure they're taking care of, care of their bodies. They, they come out of that experience, as you said, with some kids who get to meditate, they, they come back to you afterwards and they're like, man, thank you. Like that, I, I really needed that. And you know, the spread love camp is something, it's something special. It's not your typical basketball camp. Um, you know, we, we try to, we try to get you out of there leaving. Like you, you, you got a lot, you got, you got stuff for your game. You got stuff for your body. You got stuff for your mind. Fantastic. Here's a, here's a question from, uh, from the comment section. Um, as a coach, as a coach who practices mindfulness and meditation, what advice do you give to young basketball players about winning and losing? Ooh, wow. It's a good one. That's too good. That's, that's too good. That's somebody trying to get me to, to just trying to get me to talk more. Um, um, man. everybody loses. I mean, no one's going to win every game. You start there. I mean, you, you know, you, you can be upset that you lost, um, where meditation comes in, um, even when you win games, but you're going to feel it more when you lose. Cause there's that sense of frustration and what can I do better? Right. Uh, meditation becomes one of your potential outlets. I mean, that's, that's where you go. And, and look, that's one of, that was one of my experiences coming up when I realized, oh yeah, I, I meditate. Like, I, like it hit me like, yo, I'd be meditating like for real. Because after games, like most players probably do, I can't help but play the whole game back in my head. And you can't just do that, just like, just, just sitting on your phone and just doing, no, you have to like be in a state where you're literally, you're like staring at one spot on the table and like all you can think, like you're playing the whole game back in your head, every play, every dribble. And you, most players have a great photographic memory. Most players, even if they don't, I mean, most players just remember like what you did well, what you didn't do well. Right. So what is life, what you, how you respond to things. So meditation is your way to figure out, like, is the first be able to reflect on what just happened on how you performed on how you want to perform better, whatever the case. And then your response right um the uh there's a meditation guru what's his name uh mumford george mumford is a, like one of these meditation gurus for nba players he he was the one that michael jordan and kobe bryant went to first he really kind of got them going on it and um showed them he he would talk about um he would talk about slowing down time and things like that and the zone like that's that's how he said he would connect with them um but uh he talked about um how like three seconds can become eternity. 
um, in the whole Whoa. state. Like, yeah, yeah. Like this Whoa. whole concept of like, um, man, how did he put it? Like the zone, uh, you create a space between stimulus and response. Right, so stimulus, boom, there's your, your loss, your win or your loss. There's always a response, even when you win the game. You just like, you just think that every win, you can just stay right here and just keep winning games the rest of your, and there's not gonna be any better competition or any, there, no, you, there's still a response that comes from that. It's just that you feel it more when you lose. So it ends up coming up with losses more, but you have to be able to reflect on wins and losses, the stimulus, and then manufacture that response what, and prepare yourself for what that's going to be. You have to, you have to see it, envision it, and then accept and embrace it. And then, then you go out and you attack it. That becomes the mindset on the court. That's where it's hard for me to get kids who aren't fully focused and tapped. And I had a kid today, he came in first session with me. I'm like, yo, why are you here, dog? What are we doing here? What, what are we doing? He's like, and he's like laughing. I'm like, oh, you see me like laughing? Like, I'm like, you see me laughing? Like, what are we doing? Why is your, why, why did your mom bring you here? What, what are we about to do? And he's like, well, well not nah, speak up. Like, what are we doing? Like, if you don't know, because he's a talented player. And I'm like, yo, if you get your focus to a certain place, you could be a certain kind of player. That's usually the case with most players, but he has real talent focus has just been one of his things. And I'm just like, yo, you, you have, you, you, you have talent, you have this and that, but you're really missing more than anything, the focus on the back end. So I'm like, yo, what are we doing? Like, do you know what you want? Do you know why you're here? Is this, do you know, like, or are you just here to like hang out and dribble and just laugh and stuff? Like he, you know, he likes to laugh and joke around with me and stuff. I'm like, yo, this like, you're not here to joke with me. Like, that's not what we're about to do for the next hour and a half. So, All right. um, yeah, yeah. So, but no, yeah, that um, it's the response. You got to be able to you got to be able to reflect and then respond. So that was George Mumford, you said? George Mumford. Yeah. Everyone, everyone write that down because that that is brilliant. The gap between stimulus and response. Yeah. Gold. Yeah. Yeah. I took it for what it was. I, I like I said, I I. I, I take the information, I, I apply it to stuff I'm doing and it's helpful for me. I don't claim to, to be a master of that. Um, I, I you know, claim to be master of, of other things, but not that, but, uh, but the information is helpful. And, it, and uh, you know, I think it can be helpful for a lot of people if they know more about it. Absolutely, absolutely. That, that question was from Beth, by the way. Beth, okay. You know Beth? I do not know. I don't think okay, I know. Right. That. <laughs> yeah. For some reason, it seemed to indicate that you knew her, but I guess right. not. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, what What's the difference for you personally uh, between prayer and meditation? Because both of these things are really important. I mean, in, in my life and in the life of a lot of people, like prayer is really connecting with the higher power or just connecting with something. Right. And, and meditation seems to be more like like as if prayer is like a process that goes like this. Meditation is more of a process that, that mm. goes internally first and then somehow expands. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 What, what, what is that like for you? The difference between meditation and prayer, they both have their value and importance. But for you, what are the differences? Uh, honestly, it's kind of hard to say. I feel like it's hard for me to describe because they both are. They, they both kind of do the same thing for me in a sense. Um, mm -hmm. I guess the main difference I would say is like, you know, to your point, prayer feels more like I'm connecting to the ultimate source, the, the one who gave, the one who I believe is responsible for my being here, for my purpose, who has given me my purpose, who I heard speak to me on several occasions to say, yo, you're bugging, yo, you keep doing wow. this, something's getting ready to happen to you, yo, keep going. Don't, don't, don't give up. Don't, don't just give it up. Keep going. Like that same voice that I've heard is who I'm trying to connect to. Um, so, so I believe that's a, that's more of a personal thing. And uh, I, I think you described it well. Meditation is more about, um, yeah, absorbing, I guess, absorbing and then, and then releasing. It's kind of more about the energy. Um, it, it's, it's kind of more about you know, what, like everything else around you, I guess, like I put it this way, meditation is more about like the world around you 
and and this is just for me a meditation is kind of about the world around me um and prayer is more about like you know just my connection with with the big guy you know um so wow. it's more personal versus more like i guess societal you know even for me meditation and 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 learning myself and learning stillness and all it has helped me just as a human being it's just helped me function like talking to people and and doing things and you know doing things without feeling nervous or feeling you know feeling anxiety and and you know um so i i think that's the biggest difference because of how much uh, expertise you have in in basketball and in with training these kids you know, it, it's obvious that you're an expert at, at what you do. What are what are some pieces of, of pieces of advice that just come off the top of your head for for people that are getting into basketball or even entrepreneurship? Like, what's your take on mastery? It's obvious that you know a lot about basketball. You're able to deliver what what you're able to deliver your craft. You're a great trainer. You're a great coach. You're able to inspire these kids in a way that other people can't. So you have that. You have that you are a master of that craft. So what, what do you tell to people who are younger than you or, you know, like the kids that don't really know what direction they're going to take in their life. It's, it's my perspective that if you ever really want to be successful, you have to master something. Mm. So what would you tell kids when it comes to, to mastery in basketball or, or otherwise? Just no, no, no. Well, you won't always know, but just, understand what it is for you understand what it really is because i tell kids sometimes listen if you love video games that much become a master of video games figure out how to make one or figure out how to how to be a a, a, a on the marketing team for one or figure out or, or something like put your life into video games if you love them don't don't just play them all the time if you really have that like i got a younger cousin who's i just met him recently he's developing a video game like figure out what it is. It doesn't have to be basketball. Like, you know, I, I a lot of kids, um, and I understand when you come up and you're playing basketball most of your life, your parents are spending money taking you to tournaments and this, and, and, and you know, this is your life, you know, it becomes your life. You feel like you have to go to the NBA. Um, and we teach, we, we say to our kids all the time, you know, think of a pro mentality. Right now, pro, you know, NBA is obviously the pinnacle, but you can be a pro overseas. You can be a semi-pro. There's a lot of levels to pro right now. There's leagues all over the world. Um, wow, so, so cool. not say, it's not to say shorten your standards. Shoot, if you want to go to the NBA, shoot for the NBA, but understand what that means you have to start doing right, what you should be doing right now if you're saying you want to go to the NBA. Um, so so it's, it's, you know, really understanding, like, what, what, what is it for you? What gives you the fire? I say it to people, what, where's the fire? Where's the fire? You hear me talking now, you heard me talking for the last, you know, 45 minutes or so about basketball. You know, you see the fire, you hear the fire, you know, there's fire over here. It's a lot of heat. I'm, I'm sitting on fire. Yeah, exactly. Fire. You, smell, you melt an ice, bro, all around you. Bro. Listen, boy, I got heat. I'm sitting on heat. I got all types of heat ready for people. I'm telling you, I got new stuff coming up every day. So, that's what if, if 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 you're not if you don't have this talking about what you're doing, might not it might not be it. It might not be it. And there's always something that you that you're good that you're good at. There's always something you're good at. A lot, but a lot of people, especially kids, who you know you're re, you're you're good at math. Look, you're really good at math. Like you don't think you might want to do something with that? Like hell, you can incorporate that into basketball. And listen, there's basketball analysts out here, basketball statisticians and, and mathematicians and all types of math people in basketball right now. Find a way to coincide them. And, and that's kind of like my overall message, even with Basketball Society. As I said, for me, it's a platform where I wanted to use it to um, not just to do whatever I want with basketball. There's that, but it's also to be of service to society. And there's a lot of ways to do that through media, through community outreach and events through skills training, um, through mentoring, through outlets, you know, just just any kind of outlet that we can package into basketball and then collaborate with people to enhance the human experience. So um, that's my overall message is like, yo, whatever it is, like latch on to it and and get it shaken. Like, and don't embrace it. Don't, don't be ashamed of it. Don't, um, you know, there's no time for that. There's no time for that. Embr embrace it and 
and figure out who else is out there who's embracing it and wants to embrace it and help you out and help you to build something and and or if not then do it but do it yourself figure out how to get it done yourself um but whatever it is figure it out and 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 go with that no regrets incredible uh <laughs> A couple more, a couple more questions. We're getting close to the uh, to the conclusion of the hour here, but so for all, so for all these kids and um, for people that are that are younger than us, and they're really moving towards their dreams or they're they're chasing whatever it is that they're that they're meant to do. What's your advice for for people that are like on the brink of giving up? You know, like they're they're really close to just to just. They just hit that wall and they're not they're not sure where to turn this is important this is important because in running a basketball society and starting the projects that you did that you've done i'm sure there were times where you were just like i don't my your hands are just in the air what do you say to to people about that um i would say i mean i could say you know keep pushing pray and then all that but honestly if you if, i mean give up like just give up you feel if, if, if you want, if you feel like if, if you're, if you feel, if you don't have enough motivation to pull yourself out of that and to get yourself, give up and see how it feels. And, and, and if you can live with it, you know, go ahead. But, but, uh, it, 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 it give up. And then when you see what giving up feels like, see what happens from that. Dude. Wow. Great advice. Cause so, cause so many people would just say, keep pushing it. Just don't ever give up. But that, that answer you gave was if you're perfect. on the brink of giving up, if I'm on the brink of making a million dollars, I'm getting ready to make, I'm going to make a million dollars. I might, I'm, I'm, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. If you're on the brink. If you're thinking, if you're thinking about giving up, if not, it's thinking about giving up and being on the brink of giving up are two different things. Cause you can think about, cause I thought I've been working on events and I thought about, Man, I'm gonna just pull the plug on this. I don't feel like doing this work every day. Like, <laughs> man, you know what I mean? Like, I don't feel like having to get figure out how I'm gonna get all these people here and figure out how I'm gonna market this and figure out this video and that video and who I gotta call and the food and the DJ and all that. I, I don't feel like man, I just give up. Like, you know, whatever. Um, but but I had enough. I I, I that was you know that was part of my purpose. It's not something I can just give up. I can't just give up. Like that's not an option for me. That wasn't an option at the time. You know what I mean? If it's an option for you, like you can just give up, go ahead, give up and just, and see what happens. That's where I feel that the real difference is between people who, who are doing what they know in their heart they need to do. There's no, there's no backing out. Even if you feel like you want to give up, you know, you don't have a choice. This is it. It's not an option. This is it not an option you know and 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 again you can think about giving up because you can think about like you can think about it because you can also think about man what if this joint sucks like what if this is a failure like what if this doesn't work what if this is bad like what if people don't like this what if what if what if like you can and you know that's regular like you don't you can think about that and then counter that with nah dog i'm about to crush this joint nah let me hit my oh man nah let me go through my phone and figure out I'm gonna figure this out. I got, I have what I need. I have what I need to figure this out. Why am I thinking about what if, what if, what if, let me just make it happen. I have what I need to do it. That's why I stay in my lane because I'm not trying to do, I, I, I that's why I hook up with y'all on the meditation front. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna promote myself doing hosting a meditation session every week. I can't do, that's not, that's not me, but I can get, I, I, I got resource. I can, I was just with people in Chicago and I said, man, let me hit up Rose. Hey Rose, I'm trying to do a, a meditation joint, a weekly meditation joint for my kids every week. Great, Martin, great to hear from you. Uh, go ahead, we can send you the link. Boom, 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 boom. Done deal. Send me the flyer. Da da da. Like, just like right, that. Yeah. We got meditation every week, and I didn't have to do anything but make a phone call. So that's that. Yeah, that's how I see it. That's how I see it. You know. Yeah, I, I think. I mean, I've heard. It's, it's my opinion that if you, if you were willing to give up or if you, if you gave up, you really didn't have, it's like, if at, if at that level of challenge was enough for you to, to back off and to really take your hands off the wheel, I don't think that you could have handled success. 
Mm. I don't think that you could have handled the massiveness of whatever it is that you were actually about to break through towards. That's a great way to put it. That's a great way to yes. put it. I mean, sure. to be tough, like a, guy, a coach would tell me, he's like, look, bro, if you gave up, you didn't deserve it. Boom. Boom. So I'm like, you know, we don't, we don't want to hear that. No one wants to hear tough news, but sometimes tough love, tough news is really what, what actually makes us reflect and look at ourselves and look at our situation in, in a different light. Like when we're always, I could tell that you're hard on your kids and like that, that is so needed today, man. I work, you cannot believe the things I hear people say to kids and like how, how they're just way too soft with them these days, man. They're way too soft. Yeah. yeah. And, and they, and they like boys, the boys that I work with, like they would, they really look up to people like you and I, because when we get, when they get out of line, they need, boys need someone. They to get to them. hear they the really do. They get to hear They really do. Yeah. 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 They really, they really do. Kid, boys need, need <laughs> figures, men to actually keep them in line. It's the truth. I won't, I, I, I've, I've debated it with people, but I've lived it. It's absolutely true. <laughs> Yeah, and you're right. It's it's emphasis on boys because listen, I that's why I, I love coaching girls. I love coaching my girls because they don't they don't want to talk. They're not talking to me. They're not laughing. They're not checking their phone. They get a drink and they get ready. What's the drill, coach? What we doing? What we got next, coach? What we got? And they get and and they know the standard. They know what I'm talking. I don't gotta I don't gotta get on my girls unless you know they're early on and and I'm trying to get them used to the standard that we're and the pace that we're working at. But typically. More like they're not girls are they get they get right to it. They're not, you know what right. I mean? They're not talking, they're not here to no, nah, like I'm here to work, coach. What are we doing? 200 jumpers? All right, man. What are we doing? But boys, <laughs> give me a handful. Boys are oh man, but no, nah, the boys are they're, they're just yeah, they're a handful, they're different. Exactly. Well, hey, I think that's that's pretty much uh, that pretty much wraps up wraps up the hour. Are there, um, Rose? Are there any are there any final final announcements that you'd like me to make? Okay. Yep. Sign up for the the village. What's what what exactly is the event again, Martin? Yeah, Soul the Talk. We we just we're taking you guys then. We're taking Soul Talk um, and uh, doing it with the village on Wednesdays at two thirty. Uh, the sign up link will be on basketballsocietyonline.com. And if you go to Basketball Society on Instagram or any any other social media, you'll you'll see the links available to sign up. Fantastic. So that so that link will be posted, everyone. Next week, uh, don't miss our next episode. We're going to be talking with DJ Martin. So that, that information will be posted. Please come back to the, to the room to check that out. And it was wonderful. Martin, it was awesome talking with you, man. We got to oh, no. do this again. This was great. Anytime, man. Anytime I can chop it up with you, I'm, I'm off. All you got to say is, yo, Ryan wants you, and, and I'm there, bro. Likewise, I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. I'll, I'll message you personally, and we'll, we'll keep in touch. It was wonderful speaking I'm with good. you. And I would love to have you on here again and, and share more of your, your wisdom and knowledge. And, I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Yep. And thanks, thanks to all the listeners for watching. This was fantastic. Yes. Awesome. Thank you, man. Appreciate you.